okay uh, so before you join we were just uh, uh, discussing about sql so vinisha had a question whether she wants to learn sql or not so you can learn sql uh, to query the database so you can also create some custom reports if you know uh, sql you have to use visual studio to create some reports and uh, you can create some custom reports as per your client's requirement so we were just uh, discussing about it like just before you join okay so we'll get started with uh, today's session so uh, the first thing that we generally do when we get into chronos is as a consultant your first uh, job would be to uh, know about labor tracking so companies use labor tracking to help monitor where your employees work and how many hours and uh, how many wages they have earned in each labor account or cost center so the this is the first step so the first step to configuring your chronos workforce timekeeper application is to define your labor levels labor levels are a significant part of your labor tracking process so it is under organization setup we will not we will not be using all of these uh, some of these are also used in uh, other uh, requirements like advanced scheduling like forecasting etc so for timekeeping you need to concentrate on labor levels labor level entries and labor level sets so we'll get started with uh, labor levels so uh, like i said labor levels serve as the foundation of workforce timekeeper and these are used throughout the system and these are the significant part of uh, labor tracking process uh, why we do labor tracking is because it will provide your organization with a way to track hour and wage information based on a set of categories or levels so uh, for example if you if you are working for a hospital you can find out uh, how many hours have been spent in your opd or like outpatients or like inpatients how many hours have been spent in labs etc so when you have these labor levels it's easier for your company to track where they have spent a lot of hours so they can also make some adjustments to it right if they think it should not be that many hours um so um okay so labor levels are the different areas that are used for tracking time and attendance so examples include your company your region facility division department cost center and job so up to seven labor levels can be defined uh, i mean like you can add more than seven but chronos recommends only seven only using seven uh, labor levels so i can have a uh, company i can have region i can have facility i can have division i can have department and a uh, cost center and job so these are labor levels so in the assignment that that is being given to you you'll be working for a uh, uh, for a restaurant so this restaurant has different locations and they have various jobs so labor levels is common throughout the system so the first step is just to create a labor level but within the labor level you can have different uh, entries so for example uh, uh, consider that i am a company where i have uh, my presence in multiple areas so for example i have a bank i have uh, theaters i have healthcare system so this is my first uh, first level this this is my first level so i'll add entries over here so whatever i add over here are called as entries which means they belong to company so i can have a uh, money bank one second so sorry i can have bank i can have uh, theaters or entertainment i can have uh, healthcare so i'm into hospitals so i'm not just into one thing so i'm into different thing so within a labor level called company i have bank as an entry theater as an entry and health healthcare as an entry so the next step is i have to define my region so these are not the uh, this this is not what you would get at your uh, 
uh, client this will this is not what you would get as your client requirement it could vary but the labor levels are going to be the same so the steps to follow this is going to be the same more or less it's generally the same they'll have the same pattern but it's up to the client to change the names so next is region so i am i have my presence in multiple countries so for example i say i'm in asia i'm in australia i'm in uh, europe i'm in uh, north america and i'm also in south america so i could have anything any of these uh, within these so i could have a bank in all of these or i could have a theater in all of these countries or i could have hospitals in all of these countries so the next one is facility so let us say uh, what are the facilities that i have so i can say uh, i have a uh, uh, one second uh, so facilities could be buildings or locations where my uh, presence is so i can say uh, in asia i have my facility in india and uh, china in australia i have it in perth and uh, sydney in north america i have it in new york and uh, los angeles and south america i have it in sorry uh, uruguay okay so next uh, i'm going to division so i have to define a division uh, labor level so what are the different divisions that could be within a bank theater or healthcare so i could have admin related division i could have sales related division i could have services related division i could have a uh, uh, healthcare or like uh, uh, pharmacy etc so let's have uh, three examples that's fine so and uh, departments so i have training as a department i have support as a department i have uh, so what are the departments would be there i have a uh, um, production as a department okay cost centers are generally some numbers it would be like 1 2 3 2 3 4 3 2 1 different numbers and uh, jobs are what are the roles within these so i can have a banker i can have a nurse i can have a doctor i can have a manager who can manage some theaters or something and i can have a trainer etc so these are all the entries but they are not uh, specific to one one set or something so this is this is for the company so my company is saying th these are all the items that i have so i have bank theaters and healthcare i have in these many regions these are the facilities that i have within those regions these are the divisions under these and these are the departments this is the cost center and this is the job suppose i am uh, employing somebody called ann so ann is a nurse so to define ann uh, she works in uh, uh, sydney as a training nurse so in order to define this i have to use i have to define a labor account so a labor account is nothing but a set of labor level entries put together so to define a labor level entry this is how i have to add it so first i have to do company uh, so actually there's a uh, actually there's a format way how you can add a labor uh, account so the format is like this so ll means your uh, labor levels so this is how the format looks like so when back to chronos i'll pick up an employee so you see uh, this has been separated by slashes right so this means labor 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 7 so it's not necessary that i have to specify all seven so if i don't have a specific labor level i can just choose to add a hyphen, hyphen for it so if i want to define ann ann simply works in healthcare she is in australia she works in sydney uh she is into service she is into training this is a cost center and this is, this is a job so ann's labor account will be like this healthcare uh australia sydney service training 1 2 3 nurse so this is how ants uh, uh 
uh, labor account would be. So this is simply called as labor tracking. So uh, did you understand this or any questions? Like, is this confusing? So this is an example that we are using in this uh, demo. When you work in real time, it's going to be different for you. Your company might not have these many items also. That is up to the company. But this labor uh, tracking is common throughout. So this is called as a labor level entry or a primary labor account. So this is basically to identify where this employee is working. So whatever uh, hours this employee works, no, all you can see those hours uh, under those accounts. So for example, if I I go to this person, uh, this person. If I go to this person, so this person does have some uh, in and outs, right? So it is showing me that this is the labor account for this person. And in regular pay code, this person has worked 19 hours and she has earned $380. So this is helpful for me because this account has this wage. So I can simply find out from which account, uh, which how many wages have gone. This is also one use why we do labor tracking. But the first step is we have to define our labor levels. So in order to, this is already set up. This is only done once. So this is already set up. We'll not be making any changes. But when you start new or when you're already, it's already implemented, mean that's fine. But when you start new, the way to add this is, this is this there is this plus and enter icon. When you hover over it, it says it's an insert and new New row when you just click on it it will give you space to add a new uh, row so you can just type out uh, your labor level name you can give a small abbreviation for it so validate all new entries is uh, so when we work in real time we will have hundreds and thousands of employees right so it is not possible for us to add each and every uh, uh, labor account for an employee. I'll show you an example now how we add a labor manually, account manually, but it's not possible in real time to add this. So we have something called as integration manager. It's a separate entity. So integration manager is used to bring information about employees into the system. So it will save you a lot of time. So th this column is used to validate those entries. And uh, this is the minimum and uh, maximum length. So whatever minimum and maximum length you define here is what you can use in your entries. So entries is the next step that we will be seeing. And uh, if you select this, it means that you can uh, override your maximum length also. So if you have a name that is more than 20 uh, uh, digits or 20 characters, then you can uh, uh, have a different uh, name also. So this is this has to be set correctly the first time you do it uh, like making changes once this is done is not uh, really recommended 